And as, uh, it did not only write that song, he wrote many several songs mm. that were used throughout Christendom. He wrote a song as, as I surveyed the wondrous cross. Mm. This is the song that I think you all know, right? Yeah. It's a wonderful song. So many Christians, they really enjoy the songs of this man. So that's the right, and he says, as the dear pendant for the water, so my soul long after thee. And he says, you alone are my heart. Hey! You alone, I long to worship. Mm. Brethren, in a world filled, or in a world where we are constantly searching for satisfaction, mm. Mm. in a world where we are constantly searching and our hearts are perched and dry, mm. Mm. in a world where we have this deep longing within us that echoes through the ages, mm. a longing for connection, yeah. a longing for meaning, mm. a longing for purpose in life. Mm. But what if I told you that all the solutions that we try to quench the thirst of our souls, there is nothing that can quench besides Jesus Himself. Amen. That's why the theme of uh, the theme that we came up with is Jesus is enough mm. to quench our longing soul, mm. to quench our thirst. But the topic that I want us to talk about today is that Jesus is enough to quench the unquenchable thirst. Mm. Mm. This is a test that no one else can quench. The world cannot quench this test. Only Jesus. He is enough yeah. to quench that unquenchable test. Now, once upon a time, there was a woman. I hope you know this lady. Yes. And we don't know her name. But she's known of how thirsty she was. And she tried by all means to quench the test that she was, she had. But all was in vain. And this is the woman that today we want to talk about. Mm -hmm. I hope sisters are here because they clean. We are talking about the woman. Amen. Most of the time we speak about Joseph, yeah. Daniel, mm. Abraham. But there's a woman that we need to speak yeah. about. Yeah. Amen. 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 I see you smiling. <laughs> <laughs> now let's turn our Bible to our memory verse of the day. The time says 10 past 12. It's supposed to be done. <laughs> I don't know who do you blame. John chapter 4. John chapter 4. I'll just read verse 40 for now. Before we read, let us close our eyes for the word of prayer. Our dear love, the Father, our children, we have to ask that you may speak to us at this hour. Dear Lord, you alone we want to listen to. And at this moment, I am to ask that I may be a servant, that I may be an instrument, dear Lord, and may you speak to your people. This is why I am to pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. John chapter 4, verse 14, the Bible says, but whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. Mm. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. This is the verse that has traveled my mind for several times. That Jesus is promising to give. This is a gift that cannot be compared to anything else. Mm. Jesus Christ says, the water that I'm going to give you is the water of life. Mm. It's not just water, but water of life. And when you drink this water, you will never thirst again. Mm. And I believe that we are thirsty as well. Mm. And we want that water. Mm. In which when you drink, you will never thirst again. Mm. Now, we are going to speak about something very crucial. And before I mention all those points that we are going to talk about today, I will just want to give you a um, at least a summary of what's going on in John chapter 4. I know that you are probably aware of what's going on in John chapter 4. John chapter 4, we see Jesus Christ uh, moving from Judea going to Galilee. Mm -hmm. And as he goes to Galilee, he took a road that passes through Samaria. Mm -hmm. And as he was passing through Samaria, he came to the well. That's where he resided, that's where he remained. And he sent his disciples to continue or to go and buy food. And as they remained there, seated by the well, we are told that there came a woman. And this woman, when she arrived there, Jesus asked for her kindness. He asked that she may give him water to drink. 
and she refused. And then they started confessing. And then to cut the story short, we know that the woman got converted. And then she went and called the city or the Samaritans to come and listen to the men who told her everything that she had done. <coughs> and the whole city was very happy. They welcomed Jesus two days they abode with them. And then the story ended. So how the story ended is that the woman got converted. So this is John chapter 4. That's just a summary of the woman that we're going to speak about today. Now, there are three things or four that I want us to look at in this story. Number one, we're going to look at the nation that she was coming from. Mm -hmm. And number two, we're going to just look at her herself. Mm -hmm. Then, lastly, we're going to look at the solution that she had of the problems that she was going through. Mm -hmm. And you will realize that the problems that this woman had, these are the problems that we all go through. Mm -hmm. You might not be aware, but today you will be aware. Mm -hmm. And my intention in this message is for us to understand that Jesus is enough mm -hmm. for us, mm -hmm. for everything that we go through. The purpose of this message is not to expose, the purpose of this message is not to hurt anyone. The purpose of this message is not to remind you of where you are coming from. It's not to make you sad. Mm -hmm. But if you become sad and you want to cry, feel free. <laughs> because I myself, when I was preparing, I actually broke up and yeah. I cried when I remembered where I'm coming from. So I'm saying this so that if it happens, feel free. No one will not it is the Holy Spirit speaking, touching our hearts. So this is just to make sure that we are all together, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, so we want to look at the nation that she was coming from. Now let's look at, let's turn our Bible to John chapter 4 verse 5. John chapter 4 verse 5. The Bible says, Then came he to a city of Samaria which is called Sychar, near to the parcel of ground that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. So what we see here is that this woman is coming, I mean, Jesus Christ is at the city of Samaria. Now, the city of Samaria was, it was a city which initially the Israelites were joining them. Then something happened. Let's read verse 9. Then said the woman of Samaria unto him, How is it that thou, being a Jew, ask a drink of me, which am a woman of Samaria? For the Jews have no dealing, dealings with the Samaritans. So what you see here in this verse, we are introduced to the clashes that were there between the Jews and the Gentiles. And they are told that, we are told that the Jews now had no dealings with the Samaritans. Now the question is why there were no dealings? Why were they not in harmony together? What we know is that there was a war that took place back in history and this war began in 722 BC, long ago. This is years before New Testament. Mm -hmm. So what happened is that the Northern Kingdom was captured into captivity. Mm -hmm. And then what happened is that as the, uh, the Northern Kingdom was captured to cap captivity, then there were few who were remaining in the city called Samaria. And they were, as they were remaining there, the king of Assyria made sure that they take other nations which were not Israelites and he combined them together. So as he combined them together, then intermarriage took place. And as intermarriage took place, obviously what came out, it was not a pure breed. It was not a pure Jew. So the Samaritans are as a result of intermarriage. So it's what we call today a mixture of a husky, a dog husky, and also pit bull. What comes out there? Is it a real pit bull or is it a husk? We don't know, right? It's another breed. So the, the Samaritans were regarded as the breed that was not pure. So they were not, they, they were regarded as the enemies. When you read the book of Ezra, the book of Nehemiah, you see these wars. That when Nehemiah came back to rebuild Jerusalem, he said, no, we cannot work with these people. They are our enemies. So those clashes that began long back in history, they were still there even during the time of Jesus Christ. And that's what we see now when we come to John chapter 4. 
you see that the Samaritans, they could not even participate in the services of the Jews. They were not regarded as the children of the promise because of that mixture which was there. So now, the point that I want you to have in mind is that this woman is coming from a nation which is despised in the Jewish economy. The Jews, the Jews they did not want the Samaritans to unite with them. So pay attention to that point, that point alone. And then the second thing that we see from John chapter 4, when we read verse 4, if you follow me on this point, then everything that I'm going to talk about here, you will be following, right? Mm -hmm. John chapter 4, verse 6, the Bible says, Now Jacob's well was there, Jesus therefore being weary with his journey, said thus on the well. And it was about what time? Yes. Six hour. What time is the six hour? I know it's a divine service, <laughs> but I like sometimes making sure that we are together, right? So it was 12 in the noon, right? Or it was during the midday. So Jesus Christ goes to the well, he sits there, and we are told that it was during the midday. And verse 7 says, then there came the what? A woman of Samaria to draw water. Now, according to uh, the scholars, they basically say that this was not the time for women to go to the well. Mm -hmm. Women, back then, they were supposed to go to the well during, like in the morning, and also during the cool of the day, which is evening. So at noon, a woman was not supposed to go to the well. And actually, according to Adam Clegg, in one of his commentaries, he said that the Jews, they knew what was the time to go to the well to find a woman, to find a wife. So it was basically during the morning and also in the evening. And the women, the women that time were not supposed to go alone. They usually, they used to go as a group to fetch the water. So now, what is happening now when we come to John chapter 4? We are seeing one woman, she is alone, going to the way. And what time? 12 at noon. This is not a normal time for a woman to go to the way. And she was not supposed to go alone. Now, what happened? What was the issue? What we see from this text, there's an illusion here that this woman had a problem. And this is the problem that I want us to talk about today. She had a what? A problem. Why are you going alone to the well at noon? Why can't you go with other women in the morning? Why can't you go with other women during the cool of the day? Why at this time? Why at this time? Now, the problems that this woman had let her to actually have some solutions. But before I go to that, I would like us to read verse 15. Or verse 16. We want to see what was the problem. Really. Why was she going there at noon? Verse 16, the Bible says, Jesus said unto her, Go call your husband and come in. The woman answered and said, I have no husband. Jesus said unto her, you have said it well. I have no husband. For you have had five husbands. And the one that you now have is not yours. Mm -hmm. Therefore, you said it well. Now, from this text, you can deduct the idea that the reason why this woman went to the well at noon, she was facing serious issues. How come? She had five husbands. It doesn't make sense, right? Mm -hmm. So, this woman had reached a point where she feels like, you know what? She felt like, you know what? I'm not worth it. And you know, you are in a society, you are in a place where this nation itself is rejected, right? Or is despised. She herself, the reason why she was going at noon, scholars suggest that she did not want to be seen by other people. She did not want to socialize with them or associate herself with them because she was despised. She was not regarded as one who was fit to be with them. Reason because this woman seems to be a prostitute. Mm. And you see her going to the well at noon, trying to make sure I hide mm. from them. You know what I'm talking about? Mm. When you are despised seriously, 
you make sure that the whole night uh, or the whole day you are in the room studying. Why? Because you know, when you go out, they will laugh at you, right? Mm -hmm. So this was the issue that she was facing. And you see this woman going into the world at noon, making sure that there's no one who sees her, and I'm not going with anyone else. I'm just going alone. We are together, right? Mm -hmm. Three points then. Number one, she's coming from a despised nation. Number two, she herself was despised. And then we see now, now what was the solution for her problems? I will reveal to you what was the problem really. Now, her solution to her problems was basically five aspects. The first one, she thought this husband would fill the void in her heart. But unfortunately, he created more void. And then she went for the second one. And then the second one did the same thing, he created more void. And then she went for the third one, fourth one, until the fifth one. And all of them <coughs> created more void. That's why in John chapter 4, Jesus is speaking about water. And there's someone who is thirsty. This is just an object lesson. So this woman was thirsty. But she didn't know that she was thirsty. Are we together? She was not, she was thirsty, but she didn't know she was thirsty. Now you are, Jesus is saying, give me water. Give me to drink. And he said, no, 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 how come? And then later on, he just introduced this aspect. He said, you know what? This water that I'm asking you to give me, if you drink that water, you thirst again. Mm -hmm. But the water that I have is the water of life. If you drink this water, you'll never be thirsty again. <coughs> Listen to what the Sister White said concerning this woman. She said, how many thirsting souls are today Closed by the living fountain, yet looking far away for the wellspring of life, he who seeks to quench his thirst at the fountains of this world will drink only to thirst again. This woman was very thirsty. She wanted water, just like us. We are thirsty, brethren, <coughs> and we want what? Water. water. Now, what created that thirstiness? Now, I have already given you three points. She's coming from she's despised nation. Yes. Her herself, she's what? She's despised. She has problems, this woman. Mm -hmm. And she wants to solve what? The problems. And what is the solution for the problems? She goes to what? To a man. It could be, brethren, that you are not coming from a despised nation per se, right? Mm -hmm. But probably you are coming from a despised what? Family. There are, there are people who are coming from a despised family. If it's not the matter of you are coming from a despised family, there's that possibility that even in the family that you are coming from, you yourself, you are despised. Mm -hmm. Am I telling the truth? Mm -hmm. Where you know that even if it's your mother, because you are firstborn, they don't really regard you as somebody. Mm -hmm. Or because you are, sometimes you are regarded as a prostitute in a house because mm -hmm. you fell pregnant before marriage and their parents are despising you, right? Mm -hmm. Could it be that that is the case? And sometimes as when you walk, because everyone knows you in that village, you basically have a way of walking, you change even how you walk, even how you conduct yourself. Mm -hmm. Now all these things can affect how you live your life. Mm -hmm. There was a man in the book of Judges, his name is Jephthah. This man, he was born in a family where already he had brother, or brothers and sisters. What happened is that his mother was a harlot before he was born. So she was a harlot. His father had a wife before his mother. So as he was going around, he met this harlot. He slept with her. And then she fell pregnant. She gave birth to the man, Jephthah. And then the, the father brought the wife home. Now, as the man is growing up, his brothers, they rejected him. They said, you know what, we don't want you in this house. Why? Because you are going to inherit our father's inheritance. So what happened is that they kicked him out of the house. And this, we call this as outcast from the society, right? Mm -hmm. So they casted him from the society or from the family. They said, we don't want you so that you may not inherit. Now, if you were the one in his shoes, what were you going to do? Your mother is a harlot. 
obvious. Can you imagine how they were speaking about this man? Like I guess they did with our Lord Jesus Christ. They said you are born out of fornication. You are not born according to the law, right? Is it not so also with us? Some of us, our parents are not married. We are born out of what? Fornication. And because of that, we are not regarded as good people. We are sometimes rejected because of that. Now let me bring, bring to you another scenario which can cause rejection. You remember the story of Joseph and his brethren, right? Mm -hmm. Who was loved the most? Joseph. Sometimes we grow up in families like that, mm -hmm. where Jacob just loves Joseph. He can make sure that he is so already, he can make sure he buy expensive clothes just for Joseph. Mm -hmm. But you have 12 sons. Mm -hmm. Why do you love Joseph other than others? Mm -hmm. You can become, it, it might happen that you are coming from such family. And you are one of the people who are despised in the family. You know that my sister, she's the only one who received a nice dress. But myself, mm -hmm. I wrote. And all these things, brethren, they play a significant role on how we, re we react, on how we live our life. It can affect you even how you behave. Uh, the research, they found that there are many issues that people are facing today, especially young people. That's why I chose this part. Uh, if you follow me, Kepler, I'm, I'm driving you somewhere. Mm -hmm. So we're going to reach somewhere where we're going to understand why I'm mentioning all these things. So that's why I'm saying, please don't be sad. Amen. But if you want to cry, you can cry. Mm -hmm. We are growing up in a place or in a time where at least it's better. But the effects of racism is still there, right? Mm -hmm. Now, you know that there was a war between the white and the black, right? Mm -hmm. We call it apartheid, right? Amen. Now, that thing, I know that some of you, because you are converted, you think it's no longer there. Mm -hmm. But what if I tell you that somehow, somewhere, back of your, in the back of your mind, you still have it? Mm. <laughs> you still have a problem with the white. Mm -hmm. Or you don't have a problem with the white, but what you have is, you respect the white man than the mm, black. Mm, mm. Mm. Now, when a white man comes here, you bow down. Why do you do that? It's because you regard yourself as someone who is inferior to them. Is it not so? Mm. So now, those issues, they began long back. You know the history, right? Mm. But these issues are not ending. They still continue even today. Mm. We are still facing them, even today. Now, another other issues that the researchers have found, which affect how we conduct our life or affect ourselves and create this emptiness in us is basically how we view ourselves in a sense of how we value our life or ourselves. Now if I were to ask Keshe to say what makes you like what what is it that when you have it you think you are valuable or you are something. Some they think uh, if I have a flat nose Therefore, I don't belong, mm. right? That's why we try other means, right? Mm. Of trying to make sure we look like those who have sharp nose, right? Mm. Sometimes it's the issue of eyes, like mine. My eyes are not that wide, because they are red, therefore I don't belong, right? Mm. Some is because my hair, I try to buy expensive hair, try to paint, and they, they, my hair still remains the same. Mm -hmm. I try other means. Some they said this, they can try to buy maybe four thousand. They had that cost four thousand, mm -hmm. so that at least I may try to fit in. Mm -hmm. But they find that they are not fitting in, in the society. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's the skin color issues. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I'm too black, and this basically affects women the most. Mm -hmm. They say, no, what? I'm too black, and because of that, I can't work with these people. Mm -hmm. So therefore. Let me just remain in the room studying. At least I may, if I study more, I may reach a point where I have something which is valuable in my life. Mm -hmm. So this issue of skin color becomes what? A serious problem. Some is the issue of their figures, right? Yeah, you look at yourself on the mirror and then you see, ah, I don't fit in. Mm. You try by all means, you try this dress, doesn't fit in. 
we have tried this shit, is not coming together. And all these things are affected in how we conduct ourselves. Yeah. As I said, that the research they found that people who have these issues, it even affected in how you should how you express yourself. Because now you feel like every eyes are just on you. That's why some when they come here, they can't speak, right? It's so hard. Why? All these things is because of the background. It's because of what we are going through as we are growing up. They found that another issue is when we are raised by a single parent. They find that the father is not there. You are only raised by the mother. Am I telling you the truth? Amen. Are there some of us who are raised by a single parent? Amen. Actually, I myself I was raised by a grandmother, not, not even a parent. Mm. So I was just raised by a grandmother. Which means there's something that I like. They say that some people who grow like that, they have this, they develop this uh, imbalance in development or imbalanced emotions. So you have developed certain portion of your, of your life, but other portion is not developed. What do I mean? Now, a uh, human being, holistically speaking, is when you are developed physically, mentally, and spiritual aspect of your life. But then a person who grows up without one of the parents, he can, that person can grow physically, but emotionally lack something. Mm -hmm. That's why people who are above 25, but they still behave like children. Is it not so? Mm -hmm. Now, all these things is because of how they were raised. Then you have a person who is just 15 years, but that person behaves like an adult. Mm -hmm. Why? That person learned to mature fast because of how she was or he was raised. Mm -hmm. So all these things basically based on how you were raised. So now the issue of parents here is that if you are raised by a single <coughs> parent, maybe it's your mother, mm -hmm. then your father wasn't there. The issue is that you only receive the love from the mother. Now, you don't know or you have never experienced love from the father. Now, tell me, if you grow up from that environment, and how will you really solve the issues? Like, what am I talking about? I'm talking about you have love from the man, but there's no love from the man. Some, the father is alive, but he's not there. And as you're raised up, only your mother who carries you. The father is not there. Mm. Mm. According to the research, they say that you grow up broken emotionally. Mm. You grow up having received the love but having void in your heart. Because you lack love from the other parent. Mm -hmm. You all understand me? Now, a person who is raised by a mother alone without the father, when a boy comes and says, I love you, that person will freeze. <laughs> Why? <laughs> because she has never experienced that. It's the first time, right? Same thing with also the other gender. We are raised by grandmother, and you know how our, our black parents raised us, right? Mm -hmm. And then you grow up, you are living in love with both sides. Now, when the sister says, I love you, our electricity just ran in your body. <laughs> Why? Because you grow up lacking what? Love. Mm -hmm. So these are the issues that everyone goes through. Whether you like it or not, whether you believe it or not, mm -hmm. there's something that you are lacking in. There's something that you are longing for. Mm -hmm. You grow up having those longing, those desires in your heart. You don't know what you are longing. You don't know what is, what is it that is lacking in me. You are not satisfied. And you don't know why. And then, because you don't know, you said, you know what? I think I need someone to love me. Mm. If I can find someone to love me, the longing that I have in my heart will be satisfied. Mm. You grow up thirsty. Mm. Then you say, you know what? 
The only thing that can quench my thirst, I think, if I can buy a car. Mm. We resort to our own solutions. Did the woman resort to her own solutions? Mm -hmm. Yes, she did. She was thirsty, but she said, you know what, if I can have a husband, then I will be satisfied. Mm -hmm. And then she went to this husband. And then he created more oil. Mm -hmm. And then she went to another husband. And then he created more oil until it destroyed her self-worth. She thought she's not valuable enough. She cannot fit anywhere. No one loves me. You see all these struggles. Now, this is a serious issue, friends, because there are people who kill themselves, who committed suicide because of lack of self worth Low self-esteem. I'm black. I can't be. It is. And then others, because they know that they are black, they are very dark. So in order for, for to compensate that, let me have a white girlfriend who is at least a light skin. Mm. Mm. Or Amen. you grow up in an institution where they are ever laughing at you when you try to raise your hand to give an answer to that mathematics. You know, math teachers are always problems. Mm. <laughs> that that creates lots of issues. So because there's that sister was pretty, and then you think, you know what, they, they've been saying that I'm not wise enough, therefore let me get the other brilliant sister. Mm. So that I compensate that issue. Mm. Yes. Yo. We do the same thing. Amen. Did the woman change? Mm -hmm. Men after men. Mm -hmm. Don't we do the same thing? If I were to ask how many girlfriends you have had so far? Hey. Hey. If I were to ask how many boyfriends you have had so far? Hey. We change from one to another. You are just 20 years. You are 20 years. Hey. But already he hey. has changed. Hey. This shows that we are growing up from already our background is broken. Hey. Already our emotions are Already we are crying within us, there's that longing, and we want to satisfy it, we want to quench the longing. Yeah. My sister, mm. that boyfriend, let me say, is not yours. Hey. <laughs> yeah. hey. My brother, that sister is not yours. Mm. Just mm. as Jesus told the woman of Samaria, mm. even the husband that he had now, is not yours. Hey. Hey. You will see change. Hey, hey. Because they cannot quench. Because what you have, what you are thirsting for, I call it unquenchable thirst. Mm, mm. Because there's nothing and no one who can quench it. Only Jesus. Yeah. That man cannot satisfy the longing of your soul. Mm. She cannot satisfy the longing of your soul. Mm. Is your soul thirsty for something you haven't found? Mm. Yes, the woman of Samaria was. Heaven found. Mm. Yes, you are coming to church every Saturday. But there's still this deep longing. Mm. Inside your heart, there's something that's lacking. There's no fulfillment, there's no satisfaction, there's no peace that you would like to have. What is your solution, my friends? What is the solution for those problems? Are you drinking of the living water? Or you want that physical water? There's something that this woman did, which I think most of us will like doing it. Now in John chapter 4, verse 13, Jesus answered and said unto her, Whosoever drinketh of this water shall thirst again. Jesus said, the literal water that you want, I mean, the, that you are refusing to give me, if you drink that water, you will what? Thirst again. And then he said, But of the water that I shall give you, shall never thirst if you drink that water. And then the woman said, Verse 15, Say, Give me this water. Now, which water is this? She said, Say, Give me this water. Now, in order for us to know which water is this, we need to 
Look at the reason she gave. That I thirst not, neither come thither to draw. Mm. Jesus is presenting a solution. Now, Jesus in the Bible has been misunderstood a lot. When he speaks, the disciples, I mean the, even the disciples themselves, even the Pharisees themselves, the scribes, all of them, they usually misunderstood Jesus. Mm. When he speaks about spiritual things, he even said to Nicodemus in chapter 3, but if you can't understand me while I'm speaking about earthly things, what more if I speak of the heavenly things? Mm. Now he's saying to this woman, give me this watch. And the woman is saying, give me this watch. Yeah, the watch of life. But she's there. she did not understand that watch of life. Mm. She said, give me this watch that they're talking about. And the reason is that I don't want to come back to this way. Mm. This woman, had a sincere test. But we know that she resorted to wrong solutions. We are also thirsty as well. We are in the same position with her. Our souls are empty. Our souls are empty. We are lonely. We are guilty sometimes. Mm. Mm. Did she feel that emptiness? Yes. She felt it. That I am empty. I am thirsty. That's why she agreed that, you know what, Jesus, I need the what? The water. She said, say, give me this water so that I don't come back here to draw water. She was very sincere. But sincerity can be wrong. Mm. If you misunderstand Jesus. Jesus is offering a gift that cannot be compared to any gift. And Jesus is saying, here is the water of life. But he's saying, you know what, give me the water. And the reason for her to, for her to have this water is so that she may not come back to the way. This tells us that she wanted water, but not the water that Jesus was offering. Mm. She wanted what? The water. She, was, she wanted the physical water. Not the spiritual word. Not the gift that Jesus was offering. Mm. Jesus to the broken hearts, he offers the water of life. Mm. Forgiveness. Amen. Peace in your soul. Mm. But we still misunderstand. Mm. We say, Lord, give me this. Mm. In Isaiah 55, the question is, come and buy the water. Without money. Come and buy without money. You don't have to pay anything. It's a gift. Then the question in verse 2 of Isaiah 55 is, why do you spend money in buying things that's not food? Mm. Why do you spend money in buying water, which is not water of life? Bread, which is not bread. The things, my brother, that you work hard for. The things, my sister, that you desire to have. And the sin that you enjoy the most cannot satisfy your soul. If you think I'm lying, we can go back to the man of experience. Those who have been there, they will tell you. Now I know I'm speaking to young minds like me. Uh, when I was growing up, I'm still growing up, by the way. I mean, when I was still very child, very young, I used to say, I want to be a pharmacist. That's what I wanted. And the reason behind that really was I wanted money. And I thought, you know what, growing up in a poor environment, a poor family, that will really make me happy. That's what I thought. And I know some of us will think, you know what, if I can have this and that, I will be satisfied. Because you know, you are longing, you are, you are empty, there's something that is lacking in you, right? Now I want to present to you something that is very amazing. That the longing that you have in your heart cannot be satisfied by anything else. Now if you think I'm lying, ask Solomon. You know Solomon, right? Mm -hmm. He was the wisest man. If you think pleasures of life can satisfy you, 
In the morning we talk about movies, right? There are people who think that movies and pornography can satisfy the longing of their desires. But as Solomon will tell you that, you know what? In Ecclesiastes chapter 2 verse 1, all these pleasures that Solomon resorted to were vanity. That's the right as he begins his book, Ecclesiastes, vanity of vanities. Now if you think, my brother and my sister, that drinking alcohol, maybe it can satisfy your soul. Because when you look at the bar, you see them, they're drinking and they're happy. Each and every day they're just drinking. They get money just to drink. They wake up just to drink. They sleep just drunk. And you think, you know what, these people, they're living a happy life. Let me try to be like them. Ask Solomon in Ecclesiastes chapter 2, verse 3. He will tell you that, you know what, you don't understand what you are desiring for. I actually have vineyards in my house. Alcohol was made in my house. But all these things were vanity. I drank to the fullest. In his palaces, there were alcohol that was saved according to 2 Samuel chapter 11. But later on, he looks back and says, all these things is vanity. It cannot quench that unquenchable thirst that we all have. If you think my brother building a big house will satisfy the longing of your heart, because you are growing up in a family where you are, you are only sleeping in a shed. There was no big house. And all your neighbors, they are building big houses. And all this, as you are growing, you say, you know what, I want to build my mother a big house. And you think, you know what, I will be satisfied. Mm -hmm. Let me present you Solomon. Mm -hmm. If you ask him, he will tell you. He will say, you know what, my house was burned in 13 years. Mm -hmm. Now, it's easy for you to build the house in 13 years because you don't have money. Mm -hmm. But the speaker about Solomon who had everything. He was the richest man in the entire world. We are not talking about being rich in South Africa. We are talking about being the richest man in the entire world. But he built his house in 13 years. Mm -hmm. So the issue was not money. Mm -hmm. That the house was very magnificent. Mm -hmm. The house was big. But when he looks back, he says, you know what? All oh, this is Meaningless. It doesn't bring any satisfaction in my soul. Mm. Now, if you think having swimming pools in your house, it will bring solutions to your lonely. You know, I know that I'm speaking to your mind. So you are, you, are, you are imagining a house where when you come out of the room, there's a swimming pool and the water is just looking so bluish in the morning. And say, so, you know what? When it's hot, those who are coming from Mafike. And those who are coming from the book, you know it's hot, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you want to make sure that when it's hot, you just jump in and cool yourself in the swimming pool. As Solomon will tell you that, you know what, I had swimming pools in my house. But all these things, when you look back, you said it's vanity. Mm -hmm. It couldn't satisfy you. Now, if you think that maybe if I can be rich, I will be satisfied. If I can own a construction company, Maybe I will be satisfied if I can be a doctor of doctors. <coughs> I will be satisfied. And you make sure you study, you don't sleep. We learn about rest in the morning. You don't rest. Study the whole night, cross night every day. You only rest on Sabbath. And you think, you know what? I want to make sure that in my future I become doctor of doctors. I will be satisfied. Solomon will tell you, you know what? I was the richest of all. I had all silver and gold, but all this could not satisfy me. When you look back in Ecclesiastes chapter 2, verse 7, he said, All this is vanity, it's meaningless, cannot satisfy my soul. And the Andrew Kennedy's, this is a 309 billionaire, 309 dollars. So this is not just, it's a billionaire. Listen to what he says. The man who dies rich dies disgraced. Because riches cannot satisfy your soul. Now, if you think maybe women or men can satisfy my soul. Now, I can say, ask the woman of Samaria will tell you that they will create more boy. Now, if you ask Solomon, at least, Solomon will say, how many girlfriends do you have? He said, okay, I have two. You know, <laughs> I grew up in a, 
I remember when I was in high school, there were these guys, they were very brilliant, according to them. So, they would make sure that they have three girlfriends at the same time, and all these three girlfriends, they know. Some, they will make sure that they don't know. So some who are smart enough, they make sure that everyone, you know that this man he does not do only have me. There's also another one. <laughs> so they would brag about it as brothers. Just as this sisters would brag, right? Yeah, when you plan carefully to have that man. So you also brag and say, I got him. So I just well, if you men, they do the same thing. What you do when you're together, they also do when they're together. <laughs> so that's what they do. So that thing is just unique, eh? Both sides will do the same. So, the way, so he was breaking that he has a lot of girlfriends. And I know that he might be breaking as well. Yeah, I have three, or maybe in your life you have 18. <laughs> just, just like you are, you are excited. Now, if you ask Solomon, Solomon will tell you, you know what, my brother and my sister, <laughs> you are still on the first step. Or you have not even climbed the first step. Because I have 700. Wife, not girlfriend, wife. And then you will say, I have 300 concubines. <laughs> now, I don't know if in his life, entire life, he ever went to all of them. But this, if you combine them, there were actually a thousand <laughs> women. And he thought, you know what, there's something deep. I have that longing in my heart. Maybe women, and these are not just women. I need to paint this picture proper. These were the best of the best. <laughs> because this is what the kids used to do. If I go to this, if I want to make alliance with the surrounding nations so that there's no war, right? Mm -hmm. So you go to this nation, you choose the best in that nation. Now, I remember one of the of the brother at school who was showing me, he's from Namibia, he was showing me how beautiful the woman in Namibia. Mm. So can